So, episode three. Today, I want to talk about some of the news that's happening. Uh, Tony Schiavone uh, having himself locked into a contract with AEW. Uh, NXT moving to Wednesday nights on the USA Network and being expanded to a two-hour show. Then we're going to talk about Stephen Amell, who who was on the Arrow on the CW Network and uh, the different things that these could mean for AEW. The first thing, Tony Schiavone, he, if you don't know who he is, he was the voice, one of the two voices for WCW. Mike Tanay, in my opinion, was just as good or better. But Schiavone was definitely up there, like one of the huge figures of commentary in the wrestling industry. He has been for a very long time. And uh, if you go back and watch any of the WCW like uh, episodes like from the 90s right up until just a couple of years before they went out, he was, you'll instantly recognize his voice. And uh, now he signed with AEW. We don't really know what type of contract it is. I would think that, you know, to be honest with you, I think that right now, the contract probably has something to do with backstage because he probably can't sign a contract as a color commentator with another promotion because that type of work he's in contract with, with MLW. So he, Tony Khan really wants him as he should. So I think what AEW has done in my own personal guess is that They've offered him a contract for some kind of role backstage that realistically they don't really need or they do, but it would have been better to hire somebody full-time permanently for it, although they didn't do that because they want him, and as long as they have him under some type of contract, then they've got first dibs on him once his MLW contract expires. That might be what AEW is doing right now, just buying their time by locking him in some type of contract that they could legally do because it might not be involved with commentary. Now, I'm going to predict, I'm going to predict that this contract details comes out and then you're going to see article of Shivani's contract not related to commentary with AEW. I, I, I'm predicting you're going to see those headlines or something similar to that. And realistically, if you have Tony Schiavone, you're going to friggin' use him for commentary. If I had to give my own personal opinion on it, I think Alex Marvez is on his way out. I Even Jim Cornette said on one of his podcasts that, he's like, no offense, Alex, man, but you're just no good. Not at wrestling commentary. He, he, he's just not. Um, so I think, and, and the thing is, they already have, uh, they already have two commentators i mean uh, it, uh, people to interview backstage as it is one girl from impact wrestling and uh the other one is chris van fleet so th those two are doing the backstage interviews jim ross and excalibur is on the commentary booth they have uh, tony Schiavone locked into some type of contract i'm guessing it's not a contract this is anything about commentary because he's locked into a contract with mlw uh, for commentary, so I'm assuming it's some other type of contract that AEW has locked into place, so that way when Tony Schiavone's contract with MLW expires, then he, then AEW can simply transfer him from that contract to another one, uh, and it kind of keeps him within the realm of contract, so that way he doesn't come open on the market for WWE to try to entice him to go to their one of their like 1500 products. Um, so that's what I think that's going on with him. So anyway, that that's like right there. That is me talking about what I think. That's us taking a look at what we think is going on right now with Tony Schiavone, the former voice of WCW, along, him and, along with Mike Tanay. That's what's going on with him and AEW and MLW right now. I think that Schiavone is with MLW full time, but he's locked into some other type of, other type of, of uh, uh, role with AEW where it doesn't say anything about color commentary 
So therefore, he could sign it because it doesn't interflict with this contract, right, with the Ring of Honor. So that's what's probably going on right now. But at the same time, that doesn't talk about what it could mean in the future. Now, what I think it will mean in the future, personally, I think that Alex Marvez's contract might be up by the time Shivani's contract is up. And at that point, I think that they're probably just going to let Alex Marvez go and bring Shivani in. And I think the only reason why they're not doing that now is because of Shivani's contract with MLW. Personally, I think that's what it is. And if I was Ring of Honor, I wouldn't lock Tony Schiavone into a contract for two years. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. And now some people might say, oh, well, MLW, they're a small brand. They're a small company. And having somebody like Tony on board is a huge bump for them. They're not going to let him go. The thing is, if he's willing, he, he appeared on a couple of episodes of uh, The Road to All Out. He's locked into a contract with AEW. Uh, MLW has to be standing up and saying, no, he's with us, he's with us. The man obviously wants to go to AEW. He does. He's got him locked into a two-year contract. He's partway into that contract now. I don't know how far into that contract he is right now. Somebody could mention that in the comments. Please, actually, I would like to know. Uh, but I wouldn't lock him in. Because the thing is, once that two-year contract is up, he's just going to go to AEW anyway, right? And instead of standing up and saying, screw you, AEW, we don't want to have anything to do with you, it's kind of foolish. Like in today's age, business partnerships is just as important as, as uh, consumer relations. It really is. So if I was MLW and if I was Tony Khan, what I would do in my own personal take on it if I was Tony Khan, I would say this, listen, we'll buy out Tony Schiavone's contract and we get him. We have Alex Marvez locked into a contract. We'll send him to you. But instead of paying him out of his contract, we'll just pay him as he was going to be paid when he was with us. Only he'll be with you, but we'll still continue paying him for the rest of the the duration of the contract that he has with us. So then Tony Schiavone's contract is bought out and he goes over to AEW. Alex Marvez, he gets traded to uh, MLW. MLW doesn't have to pay anything for Alex Marvez because his contract with AEW, it's like there's all kinds of legal things in the world. I don't know, but they could transfer his contract to uh, to be a contract for MLW with a stipulation saying that AEW agrees to pay uh, Alex Marvez a salary based on what was negotiated on the salary that Alex Marvez had when he signed with AEW. They, uh, AEW agrees to pay that the whole time his contract is running when he got traded with Ring of Honor. And then Ring of Honor can sit there and say, shit, we got Tony Schiavone paid out, we got Alex Marvez, the contract is in our name, but the pay that AEW was going to give him, they're giving him now still, and we don't have to pay anything for him for the next two or three years. You know what I mean? And he was associated with All Elite Wrestling, so he is a name that's more known than a lot of people now. And we've got a partnership with a huge, huge corporate brand. So I think it's a win-win for us. See, that's what I think MLW should look at it as. Because if they don't look at it like that, they're, they're just shooting themselves in the foot. They're, they're being Vince McMahon. Oh, we're going to lock you into a contract. You really think that's not going to piss Tony Schiavone off? He's just going to wait for his contract to expire, and then he's going to jump ship to uh, AEW. And then AEW, and then MLW won't have a chance to get Alex Marvez which I really think that's what they would do. They already have two backstage uh, interviewers. They already have uh, an announcer, uh, Justin. I think his name is Justin Roberts. But, man, holy Jesus, he's awesome, man. Man, that guy is good. AW is a really good ring announcer. <clears throat> and, um, and, and like... There's no place for Alex Marvez in AEW, personally, I think. If Shivani comes on board, he's going to be in a color commentary booth. There's no way he wouldn't be. You know he will. And if he will, you're not going to get rid of Excalibur. No way. He's good. You're not going to get rid of Jim Ross. Well, duh. I think that 
getting rid of Alex Morvez is what would happen. And if he's replacing, where else is he going to go? He could go to MLW and work for them while AEW pays out the rest of his contract as per normal. The only difference is Alex is working in MLW instead of AEW. Plus, MLW gets a working relationship with AEW to, like, wrestle back and forth and stuff like that. It's a win-win for MLW. Personally, I think that if they don't agree to some kind of negotiation with AEW here, I think that MLW is just putting themselves in a bad spot. I really, I really do think that. Because this, the, to me, if to me, if MLW locks Tony Schiavone into a contract, then in my opinion, that is them having the same mentality as Vince McMahon when he added six months on to Luke Harper's contract, and when he wouldn't let Sasha Banks go despite all the damage she was trying to do to her, her uh, reputation in WWE's management's eyes. In my opinion. Uh, you know, despite uh, despite uh, Vince McMahon breaking the handshake agreement with Dolph Ziggler, not letting him go, like all this stuff, I find is really, really, really shady. And if MLW does the same thing with Tony Schiavone, then to me they're just as bad as Vince McMahon. They really are. The guy doesn't want to be there. The AEW obviously would buy out his contract. Don't tell me that Tony Khan never had mentioned that to MLW yet. Uh, Shivani was in a couple of uh, episodes to All Out, and now he's locked in a contract, and they really want him. And MLW has come forward twice or three times so far saying that he's with them only. So all this is going on, and Tony Khan's totally up and involved with everything. So, so don't give me this argument that AEW wouldn't have already offered to buy Shivani's contract. You know they would have. With all that kind of stuff going on, you know they would have. MLW has obviously refused. Shivani's obviously made his intent known that he would rather be with AEW. MLW is saying, no, you're with us. To me, that's, how is that any different than Vince McMahon? I don't see how it's any different. And if AEW says, look, we'll give you Alex Marvez, buy Shivani's contract, and pay Alex, Parve uh, Alex Marvez as per normal, only difference is he'll be working with you instead of us for the rest of the contract he negotiated with us. Only it'll be work with you. That would be MLW saving, getting and saving a shit ton of money for how big they are. But whatever, whatever, I don't know. It's MLW's call. I think they should negotiate with AEW, agree to sell out Shivani's contract, perhaps take Alex, which I, I do think that that's what would happen. And then uh, AEW could pay uh, Alex for the rest of his current contracts. They would have to pay him out of that anyway. So instead of paying them all at once, uh, they could send them to work with MLW and then he could get paid while he's working with them. That's what I think they should do, but they won't because they want to be Vince McMahon, you know? It's a big pissing contest. So the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, NXT. Now NXT apparently is moving to 8 to 10 Eastern Standard Time on the USA Network. And now the the NXT show always is, it, whether it's going to be live or it's going to be taped. So far it's been taped and it has been from Full Sail University, one location. Now WWE or Vince McMahon or whoever, well, probably a lot of people involved with WWE, wants to bump it up to two, night, uh, two hours. They want to give it a bigger budget. Uh, they they want to make it go live. But the thing is, they haven't said if it's a touring brand or not. They this, Based on what they've said so far, that, that stuff there is what we know. But we don't know if it's going to be a touring brand. Now, if it's going to be a touring brand, i got to believe, and Chris Jericho said this himself similarly. He said it's going to dilute the product. WWE is spraying themselves too thin. They're spraying themselves way too thin. And AEW is already... They're going well and good. They're, they're doing better than any other promotion on the planet right now. Tied with WWE in terms of attendance uh, for smaller events. And somebody will sit there and say to me, Oh, you're an idiot. This guy is stupid. You know, uh, WrestleMania had 83,000 or some shit fans. All Out had 120 
like at least 120,000 confirmed individual people wanting to go. That was more than any WrestleMania in history. 164,000 in total. I think 120 something verified to be actual people. You could look that up. So don't give me this argument that AEW is nowhere near to what WWE is. I think AEW is starting off slow and they're building themselves up to that point. They don't want to <coughs> start off too fast, <coughs> which is smart, in my opinion. Which is very smart. And. I think that with NXT, the WWE has the opposite mentality. Let's just jump in head first, jump in head first. They've got Raw, which is in a different city every Monday, three hours live. The attendance for Raws have been struggling. The Raw, after a monthly WWE pay-per-view, usually does decent, but not all the time. Usually after, only after like big pay-per-views. The Raw after big pay-per-views will do good. Uh, other than that, they're doing horrible. Wrestle Talk had an episode where uh, there was one Raw that only had, I believe, between three and four thousand. I'm almost positive that's how much uh, was quoted. Between three and four thousand for a Raw. This is not some house show. SmackDown has been having the same problems for attendance. Like, people are, need to realize that AEW is pulling the same amount of people per... Like, if you look at uh, WWE's TV shows, Raw and SmackDown, and if you look at uh, AEW's pay-per-views, the pay-per-views are drawing in more than what WWE's TV shows are. And, of course, somebody's going to say, oh, your pay-per-views can only do what a, a WWE TV show can do. So, how the hell, blah, 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 you're an idiot, you know? Your pay-per-views are only equal to our regular-ass episodes, so AEW sucks. No. Like I said, AEW starting off slow. If you go back and look in the different news articles that you can find, you will see that the venues AEW is running does not support the demand. Not at all. Not by a long shot. AEW, the amount of people they're serving in terms of the venues they're picking and the capacity of those venues does not come anywhere near satisfying the demand at all, period. A Capital One Arena sold out in between two to three hours and they proved that it only took that long because Ticketmaster's website kept crashing from the amount of demand. Like, I haven't seen any news reports on the total amount of requests, but I guarantee you it would have been a lot more than 10,000. Way more. I wouldn't be surprised if it was two and a half times. So, AEW has this kind of demand for their show because they're only running one show. They're only doing one show. They're not spreading themselves too thin. WWE has Raw, three hours. They have uh, SmackDown. Two hours every week. Now they're going to have NXT two hours live Wednesday nights. And it's always going to be from Full Sail Arena. Vince McMahon is an alpha male. He's an alpha male. He is. that. His mentality is to be an alpha. Let me rephrase myself. Vince McMahon thinks like an alpha male. He wants to be the top at everything. Do you really believe that... NXT is going to stay at Full Sail Arena every week when AEW is touring the country across Canada and the United States and possibly UK and stuff. No way. No way. NXT is going to become a touring brand, I guarantee you. And one thing I'm going to make a prediction of this time next year, either 205 Live, probably, or SmackDown. One of those two will be just outright cancelled. Because there won't be enough demand. Any market in the world can only, can only, there's only so much customers for any type of market. The market right now is on the, on the verge of being oversaturated. And shows are going to stop uh, selling as much tickets as they are. Uh, there's five house shows that's been, that WWE had to cancel over the last month or so. Uh, Ring of Honor is annual, their annual 
Super Bowl, you know, biggest event of the year, only drew in just over a thousand people. With WWE putting on so many products, five shows, Raw, 205 Live, NXT, NXT UK, and SmackDown, with all these shows going, with NXT going to two hours live, with, I guarantee you it's going to be a touring brand, there's no way Vince is going to have the show that he has on Wednesday nights that's going up against the the new WCW, let's just be honest, that's what it is. I love it, but that's what it is. He's not going to find himself in this war again, but see the show that he has in this war, something that stays in the same place all the time while the other guys are touring in different cities. And, you know, they're probably going to have helicopter views of, like, the... the buildings and the arenas from the outside and stuff like that and then nxt is just going to be live from the same venue every time like i don't think full sale university can hold as many people as capital one arena capital one arena can hold upwards to twenty thousand people you know and i know AEW could tweak things to make it so they can get 14 or fifteen thousand in there if they really wanted to so i can't see vince allowing Fourteen or 15,000 aerial views of the arenas around looking really, really good. And his product that's going up against that is from the same place every week. I guarantee you it's going to be a touring brand. And that matters because it's going to dilute the product. He's going to have to drop 205 Live or SmackDown. He's going to have to drop one of the two. You know what I mean? Uh, they're canceling house shows multiple times. They've got... Five that I know of, five house shows that I know of in the last month to two months have been cancelled. So you take NXT, you bump it up to two hours, make it a touring brand. And do you really think those house shows are going to do any better? No, they're going to start. They're not. It's going to keep happening. They're going to cancel more and more. And eventually WWE is going to be like, we're canceling so many house shows. We have to cut something out. We have to cut something out because it does come down to a point where how many dollars is in the collective consumer's pocket. You know what I mean? And instead of having Raw have 10 shows a month, the house shows for uh, the roster for Raw, having 10 of those or between 5 and 10 of those shows being canceled a month. And the same thing with uh, the house shows for NXT and the same thing with the house shows for uh, SmackDown. And for 205 Live, instead of having, uh, well, NXT UK is kind of different because they're over in England, so they might not be affected with the business going on here in America. But of those four things, if each of them has five house shows a month canceled, or collectively they have 30 house shows a month canceled, for the first few months, NXT becomes a touring brand. They can't, there, there's no point to keep doing that because they'll be weakening all their brands, all their shows, they'll be weakening their product across the board because they'll end up paying out more money to keep these four things going. Uh, that's not drawing in enough for them to, for it to bring in enough profit for it to be worth it to them. So I really believe that 205 Live or SmackDown is going to be... I doubt SmackDown. I, I doubt SmackDown. I would say 205 Live this time next year would be cancelled. Because there, there, any market can only supply, a, a, any consumer market can only support so much product before the market gets oversaturated. And I think WWE, I think their success is going to be, could potentially be their own downfall. Because they're going to be so obsessed with being number one, they're going to spread themselves so damn thin. They're going to have so many shows that's not going to make anything. And then once these TV deals end, once the deal with Saudi Arabia ends, Tony Khan's father, Shahid Khan, is from the Middle East. Do you really believe for one second that once WWE's contract ends, that AEW won't have a chance to go over there and start doing that in their place? If you think that WWE is going to renew their Saudi Arabia contracts when AEW is owned by a guy named Shahid Khan from the Middle East who made his money in America, if you think he is going to lose over Vince McMahon in terms of getting contracts in Saudi Arabia, you're, you're being foolish. Totally foolish. 
WWE is spreading themselves too thin, and the bottom line is that either 205 Live, which I would say it is, or SmackDown is going to be canceled this time next year. One of the two will have to. Because um, they're just putting out too much product. And... I th and the third thing I want to talk about is Steve Amell. Um, he's done with a show called Arrow on the CW. Uh, it was for eight seasons. It just ended. And now he's going to be in a new uh, series called Heels, which is on the CW. It's been approved for eight episodes off the start. And Steve Amell did wrestle at All In. And he tweeted Cody Rhodes saying, Heels, it's a new show on the CW. Do you think that you guys could help us out a bit? And Cody Rhodes said, no problem. Now, the CAW is a free-to-air network that's available to Canada on pay uh, television providers. And it is run by... Uh, it is, it's in conjunction with AT&T. And... Um, uh, I can't remember the other one. I can't. I think Warner Media and AT and T are the two uh, studios I involved. Um, I could be wrong about the two parent companies who are involved with the joint venture to create C the CW, but that's what the CW is. It's a television network owned by one of them. I know was AT and T, and I think the other one is uh, Warner Warner Media, and uh, that is what Heels is going to be on the wrestling show with Stephen Mel in it. Stephen Mel wrestled in. Uh, all in and he tweeted Cody Rhodes saying can I have some help for the show and Cody Rhodes said absolutely now to me that is a big deal because AT&T Warner Media uh, the people involved with this network have a lot of ties to Hollywood a lot of ties to uh, movie actors a lot of ties to mainstream media this is going to get a lot of people's uh, a lot of people's attention. That's the thing. AEW has more connections. They may not have more assets than the WWE. Uh, WWE has they own more camps. They own more wrestlers. They have more history. They have more like uh, things like that. But AEW has just as much, or arguably more, connections than what the WWE has. I would say, and they're just starting. I'm not saying AEW has more established. I'm not saying they have just as much assets. I'm not saying as they, they have as much wrestling camps. I'm saying that they probably have just as much or more connections. There's a difference between saying as much connections and saying as much capital assets. So it's going to be really interesting to see how that goes. What with uh, Arrow, if it goes well, which I'd imagine it would, if it's going to be about wrestling and if all the wrestling is going to be involved with helping that, then not only is that going to uh, help Arrow become, uh, heels become successful, so it's also going to get AEW's name out there to the mainstream audience, right? Because you're going to see these wrestlers, you're going to see the names in the credits and stuff. And I'd imagine the All Elite Wrestling logo is going to be in the TV show. If I was AEW, I'd be stupid not to put my logo in. Uh, Tony Khan would be stupid not to put his uh, pro wrestling promotions logo in the in the episodes when it's happening. Somewhere, somehow. Even if it's like in the background or something. But, um... And I think that's going to open the door for... Uh, some wrestlers to do movies as well and i think that would sweeten the deal quite a bit quite a bit um because from what i understand wwe they created wrestlers superstars those stars became household names then they went on to audition for movies and got the parts that to me is like a a, a removed relationship right I think with AEW is going to do what with directly working with Arrow on the CW, they're going to establish a direct relationship where it's not going to be like with the WWE's create a star, then they try out for something and they're known because of their WWE status and then they get the job, probably half for that and half for their ability. I think AEW is going to create a direct relationship. They could have the potential to do that with this. 
And I think that opens a lot of doors, for sure. The one thing I would be wary of, though, about that, if I was Tony Khan, is wrestlers leaving to be movie stars. The Rock did it. John Cena did it for a while. Uh, Batista did it. Uh, there might be other ones I'm not thinking of off the top of my head that you might know of that you can mention. But um, that's one thing you got to be careful of when it comes to working with the movie industry while being a major, major, like, world leader in one of the two world leaders in professional wrestling is to make sure that your, your wrestlers don't want to leave and then just go and make movies, right? So I think that would be something that you'd have to figure out how to work with without being a detriment to your roster. But um, but that's exciting. Stephen Mel is exciting. Uh, NXT UK, I mean, sorry, NXT uh, being a two-hour live show every Wednesday night on USA Network, that uh, that's going to become their number one show. It's going to become their number one show. Raw is not going to be the shit anymore. They're not going to be the bee's knees anymore. SmackDown is not going to be the bee's knees anymore if it ever was. It's going to be NXT. NXT is going to be the next biggest Per, uh, biggest show, uh, WWE's flagship show is going to become NXT, which does have me a bit worried. Which does have me a bit worried. Um, like I, I don't think that's good, but at the same time, it could undermine WWE's uh, ratings on Fox Sports One, who's paying them a crap load of money, and there is a clause in the contract with WWE. That WWE has with Fox Sports 1 that says if they don't uphold a certain rating consistently, then Fox Sports 1 can opt out of the contract with no legal or financial penalties whatsoever. So if, uh, I mean, they've got five shows on and now it's going to be three on major television networks. And I would think that NXT is going to suck out the, the viewers from Friday night. I don't think it's going to affect Monday night too much, but I do believe it's going to affect uh, Friday night a lot, like SmackDown's ratings quite a bit. Um, I see that as a detriment. They're spreading themselves way too thin, and if they don't have a, and if they don't have enough money to keep SmackDown going, and Two Hundred Five Live going, and Raw going, and NXT going, I strongly believe it's going to be Two Hundred Five Live that's going to be cut out because. The deal they have with Fox is worth so much, they would probably do whatever they had to to keep that up, keep the attendance up, try to keep its ratings up. But at the same time, they're going forward with NXT. So I think this is a panic move. And even if they lead NX, uh, AEW in the ratings, which I don't think they will personally, because it, un unless it's going to be a touring brand, People are not going to care about a show that's from the same place every week compared to another place that's in a different venue, uh, a different city uh, every week. You know what I mean? And in places that have way more fans. So I think that um, WWE is shooting themselves in the foot because if it's possible for NXT to overtake Wednesday Night Dynamite, then they're going to be doing it. They're going to be doing it at the detriment of Raw and SmackDown's ratings, and those ratings now are barely holding themselves. They're barely, barely, barely holding themselves above the line that the, the studios want. I don't know, but I would guarantee you that Fox Sports 1 has probably said to WWE, we want over, it has to be over 2 million viewers. It can't go below the 2 million mark. I guarantee you that's what it is. I would almost be willing to bet money on that being the minimum bar that Fox Sports 1 had set for SmackDown. Uh to perform when it moves to uh, Friday nights on October 4th. And with NXT being a two-hour weekly show on USA Network, and especially if it turns into a touring brand, which I hope it doesn't, but if it did, you're doing it at the detriment of Raw and SmackDown ratings, and those ratings are suffering as it is now, and I don't think that uh, WWE can afford to lose that Fox Sports 1 TV deal and what with all of this knowledge, all of this product, all of these troubles with ratings, all of these troubles with attendance, 
in mind, I guarantee you that USA Network isn't paying for the production of the show. I'll guarantee you that now. There's no way the USA Network would have agreed to pay for the production of NXT. There's, there's just no way. No way. What with the, the ratings of Raw and SmackDown being in the toilet, attendance being in the toilet, only time they do decent is when it's, the, it's after a major pay-per-view. They had the reunion, but that was just a one-off thing. So... I think WWE's, their own success is going to be their own potential downfall in terms of one of the shows being cancelled. I, I strongly believe that 205 Live is going to be cancelled. They're not going to want to cancel SmackDown. It's worth too much to them because of their Fox deal. And Raw, they're never, they'll never let go of Raw. So I think 205 Live will be done, and I think NXT... If it becomes a touring brand, it's going to become their flagship show. Raw and SmackDown will suffer even more because people will want to see NXT. And then WWE will have some tough decisions to make for how thin they've spread themselves. So anyway, that's this video. Uh, Tony Schiavone to AEW. MLW have a problem with that. Uh... NXT moving to USA Network and becoming a two-hour live show, uh, spreading themselves too thin. And then uh, Steve Amell uh, from The Arrow starting a new show called Heels, working with AEW, could potentially set up a direct relationship with AEW and Hollywood for their wrestlers to star in movies and stuff. How do you avoid doing that without being a detriment to losing your wrestlers to become movie actors? And then we went back and talked about uh, a little bit further into WWE having to cancel one of their shows, probably 205 Live. Uh, I can't see 205 Live continuing. I, I, I can't. Like, they've canceled five house shows in the last month uh, or more shows than that was canceled. And um, the ratings are down. The attendance is down. Instead of suffer all five shows suffering... Because you can't get enough viewership and attendance, it's better to axe one and then the amount of money that was taken out of the collecting of the consumer's pocket is put back, which can be spread out to the other four shows they have. So I think that's what they should do.